Hey everybody, Texas Truck here, Lance's Performance Chapel on the Star and It is Saturday night, back in the shop with that chicken fried steak. Thanks for a fantastic evening. And uh, in an effort to kind of clean the shop up a bit, getting some stuff kind of cleaned out of its boxes, cut down, thrown away so I can get back to wrenching on the truck. What we have here is a quick tool haul from Capri Tools. Uh, brought in quite a few of their items now. Favorite is still the ratcheting wrenches. Uh, kind of been hit and miss on everything else uh, but this is something that was on sale I was willing to take a chance on it it's something that should be just fine unless it's a complete fail which we'll know fairly soon but it is their part number CP21220 once again timestamps and links to these products down below in the description gloves I'm wearing are from Alpha uh, use the discount code Lone Star if you want to check those out but uh, that part number equates to what would typically be a $29.99 item it's currently on sale uh, for this promotional period for $19.99 and what is it you ask yourself well it is right here it is a tire gauge now I'm a sucker for these things in part because I use them and in part because some of my old ones are dying off I know exactly what I like I'm pretty sure I have what I think is the best tire gauge ever uh, but you don't know until you try and so you kind of have to factor everything in another issue I had uh, when I was kind of going back to see what that one cost I thought it was pretty expensive and it if it used to be it isn't anymore <laughs> and uh, I'll kind of fill you in on that in just a second but $19.99 on the promo right now helped me get free freight as well uh, this one is going to be a two and a half inch face if I'm not mistaken they say two inch online I believe said two and a half but uh, it's zero to 60 psi that's the bread and butter the color scheme is great readability should be really good in daytime not so much at nighttime. You're going to need to be at a station. You're going to need to have your cell phone or a work light or something available to you. Uh, but that said, there are a couple of cool features. Well, let's see if they talk about them. They say get precise PSI readings with the Racing Series tire gauge. A plus 2 to 3% professional accuracy, plus minus, I should say. Compact dial with large readouts makes the gauge portable and easy to use. 0 to 60, ideal for most vehicles. I would agree with that. That covers slicks, that covers drag racing that covers normal PSI and a tr car truck trailer and everything in between anything past that you're gonna want a different readout uh, at least I would uh, we've got a compact two inch dial face two and a half inch total diameter so that must be what they're referencing with the included protective bumper that is a nice feature uh, you'll see that better in just a second that's got a 12 inch hose with it there's a built-in pressure bleeder button for fine-tuning this I love and the reason for that let's say that you're trying to dial your tires in a track and you drove there and you're going to drop them down right and you sit there and you're you know depressing the valve and everything you're kind of looking at the sidewall and you're like that feels about right and you come in you wanted to run 18 psi and you're at 21. with the gauge still attached you can simply use the bleeder screw evacuate the air while looking at the gauge dial it in exactly where you want to same thing in a standard deal uh, let's say that you you know, are out filling up and you kind of think, man, yeah, my tire kind of looks low. You usually run your truck tires at, say, 45 PSI. You take a look, one's at 38, the others are at 40. As you go in and fill them, inevitably you're going to slightly overfill. Use this to bleed it down while looking at the gauge. You don't have to constantly connect, disconnect, see where you're at. You can just do it with the gauge. Huge time saver. Uh, let's see here, no battery, which that's nice, uh, depends if you like the digital ones or not, uh, meets all the ANSI, check pressure on cold tires only, uh, refer to the vehicle's owner manual for the recommended PSI, do not use gauge on tires, pressurized over 60, remove the valve cap, push the gauge chuck firmly in the valve stem hold down, press the bleeder button to release excess pressure as needed, after reading is complete, remove the gauge, replace the valve cap, push the valve leader blah 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 all right so i would believe this is made in taiwan that is correct well, let's see what we think of it. so cool design feature i like or i've grown to like on these it didn't used to always be like this is the protective covering it's almost like a tire tread on some of them uh this one maybe not quite as beefy up around the dial face as i would like but pretty solid around the body uh, if that counts or anything to you you can get a good look there again the black face beautiful this is awesome for full-on sun conditions uh, like if you track your car like literally track it not drag strip which is what i usually refer to this would be nice because you don't have the glare to deal with which you might with a white face that said at nighttime again you're going to need some luminance uh, most likely to see this i don't think there's any features that would allow you to uh, 
see it any better. That said, you can see we go from down here in the zero danger zone all the way to 60 PSI. Not sure why she's doing that. She must be focusing on something else. So 30 is at the 12 o'clock position, essentially. There's 15, there's 45. You kind of get a feel for it. That's about all you need to know there. Case in point, the bleeder valve, though, which is an awesome feature. Let's say we were trying to dial in 32 PSI. We're at 34 still connected I hold that down I watch the gauge your needle drop we're done you don't have to pull it off see if you're at 33 pull it off see if you're at 30 put air back in you just go by the gauge it's an awesome thing hose is actually a decent length again 12 inches here now something I'm disappointed by uh, I only now see this it should be fine you know it's not like it's terrible or anything but that is just like the El Cheapo, like $1.99, pick them up at the parts store, uh, standard little pin style tire pressure gauges. Interesting to note though, even though you can bleed the air here, it does have that stub on the back. That's probably just a default design. I would assume these are made for several companies. Some of them may not spring for, literally, the bleeder valve. And then this side right here would be nice. You don't have to do it with your fingernail. A lot of times I just use a valve stem cap. I found that it works better than my fingernail. It's more consistent. I can maintain pressure. That's just me. <laughs> so I think it should be good. It looks to be decently reinforced around the connection points. That's usually where this style will fail. Because keep in mind, most people don't keep it, you know, strung out in their trunk like this. It's usually in a bag, in a box, you know, in a something. And it's going to be coiled at least to one extent. Uh, so keep that in mind. But I'm willing to give it a try. I'm willing to see what we think of it. Uh, possibly just ride through it in one of the cars. <laughs> Call it good. But uh, what I want to do is showcase my favorite one ever. And uh, a long time ago, I bought myself an auto meter one, which was pretty nice. This one was way cheaper. <laughs> and uh, I, it's the best I've used. It's from Joe's. If the face looks funky, it should. That's because it glows in the dark. This doesn't really glare in the daytime, and obviously at nighttime we can see it pretty good. This also goes to 60, but note the difference here, where these are just kind of, they are stashed. You know, you've got the hash marks there. This is individually numbered out. It's also a larger dial face, which makes a pretty big difference. Note it also has the bleeder valve, which I love. It faces straight up. This one is off to the side. I kind of like it straight up. I don't know if that's just because I've gotten accustomed to this. This also swivels and is at the 45 degree mark. It's also, when you compare it to this end, of higher quality. This is a little bit more of a rigid hose. I mean, they're both flexible, but I just feel I have better play with that one. It also looks to be a larger diameter. This does rotate, but not near as fluid. Like, I'm having to put some effort <laughs> into making that happen. Whereas with this one from Joe's, I mean, it's just like on a swivel type of a deal. I thought this was expensive when I checked the price because I figured I'd showcase it in this video real quick. It's down to 23 bucks and then they make them in all sorts since it is racing based. Uh, if you want like 0 to 15, 0 to 25, 0 to 30, whatever you can dream up, you can pretty much find it. But uh, this one, like I said, we will give it a fair shake. It could become my second fiddle. It could be something decent enough to keep in the vehicles. Who knows? What I want to do now though is move on to our next item. This was really the reason I was just kind of something I threw on because I felt like it was a good deal and I wanted to try it. This is the reason for the purchase. On the truck, which I'm currently dismantling, something I'm going to have to do when I put it back together, is torque to some strange inch-pound sequences. There's only like three or four bolts that have to be done. And of course, I don't have any way of doing the inch-pounds outside of like converting down. And uh, even at that point, you know, when you're dealing in inch-pounds, not foot-pounds, that's because it's more like finite adjustment. You know, it's a smaller fastener, something you will break off. Uh, something that clearly with the torque spec needs to be torqued properly, particularly like the converter bolts, which is one of the things I'm worried about. Uh, and so it justified the purchase of a quarter inch drive torque wrench that's going to be in inch pounds. Now, not going to lie to you, my first choice was going to be to come in and do German. Uh, that said, that stuff is crazy expensive. And there also, I could not find anything that was dedicated to inch pounds. Now, if we want foot pounds, you know, they have like dual scale and everything. Maybe I couldn't find what I was looking for. Uh, but what would be the dream scenario would be this on a smaller scale, the Ghidorah Torque Fix. This thing is awesome. I've used it a bunch. You'll probably start seeing it in some of the videos. <laughs> but, uh, the adjustability and the readout on this thing 
is so much better than everything I've used in the past. I absolutely love it. Um, they do have some sizes, but it's all like in Newton meters and everything. And uh, as is, this will not just be used on a truck. All the late model vehicles that have got a plastic intakes, right? That's obviously not cast iron. It's not even aluminum. It's something that has minimalistic torque specs. <laughs> so I'm thinking I can tag team this. After trying to go German, which I was having a hard time, also, that's one of the instances where I could potentially skimp. You know, a half-inch torque wrench, you want something good and solid. With a quarter inch, I honestly just am not going to use it as much. There's going to be a couple instances where I want it, but not near in the case of anything that we would use this big one for. Needless to say, being unable to find it, it's kind of nice to come in and not have to pay, you know, two to four or six hundred dollars for a torque wrench and be able to get something a little bit more affordable. What I wanted to do was bring one in from Tang Tools. Uh, they've been having a big, like, tax rebate sale type of a thing for, like, quite a while now, like, probably over a month. And I went to bring it in. I was like, yep, we're going to pull the trigger. I was going to throw some other items in out of stock on the torque wrench. It's like, you got to be kidding me, man. <laughs> so I was kind of bummed about that. And then my thoughts, we just took a look at the Tecton stuff. I was going to give them a shot. Nope, can't do it. And I'll tell you why in just a second. And then Capri kind of came through in the middle ground. There is one thing I'm sort of upset about, uh, but we will hit on it real quick. The Tang Tools, this was all would have been quarter-inch drive, you know, for these specs and inch-pounds. They were going to offer a 40 to 250, which that's a little high, you know. I would prefer if it had like a bigger scale range. Uh, for $68.99, I was fine with the price. I was excited to try it out again. Not in stock, sadly. Tecton, they're doing it right. I mean, when you're dealing with scales like this, if you narrow the scale down, just like on the air pressure gauge, 0 to 15 is best if you're using 10 PSI. You don't need a 30 or a 60 or a 50 or a 100. Uh, similarly, if your tires are, you know... 50 PSI, you don't necessarily care about having, you know, 0 to 15 take up a huge chunk of your scale, right? So Tecton kind of divides it up. They've got a 10 to 150, which would set you back 45, and then they've got a 20 to 200, which would set you back 40. The problem is they didn't get to the range I needed. Uh, there's like one of the bolts that I think was around 2... Was it, it's 235 or 245. It was something strange. <laughs> <laughs> it ended in a 5, I remember that, and it was near 250. And then, again, coming down, thinking, okay, if I scale this right, I could potentially use this for plastic intake bolts. I want that number to be as low as possible, 10, if it's at all available. Obviously, it was with the Tecton, but then we max out at 150. There you go. So with Capri, I was like, well, let's see what Capri has to offer. They have their professional line that goes 20 to 245. It's 39 bucks. It looks just like all the cheap ones I've had. Uh, and then they had an industrial, and they broke it down in the quarter inch or drive size. Is 30 to 150 would be 89, and then 50 to 250 would be 99. The problem I have there, again, I don't really care to purchase those when I'm not going to use it that frequently type of a thing, right? Uh, so the middle ground here, this is kind of exciting because it's a total different setup on the handle, uh, but it's their diamond grip one, and it had the widest range. It was 20 to 250, and that's what it's advertised on the website, but if you look here on the box, it's 25 to 250. I'm not sure which one is correct, which one is incorrect. I guess we'll have to open it up and see if they have it in the calibration certificate or something. Uh, but the price point for this tool was going to come in for $49.99. Again, with what was in stock and what kind of met my criteria, I felt like this was the best bet. Uh, and again, you know, when you're talking like $39 to $69, if you can get a better quality tool and you can give yourself a more usable range where you don't have to buy a second torque wrench, that's the route I would personally go. Now, something like this, half-inch drive, I could be willing to divide that up a little bit differently because, again, so much more versatility and usage for this. I can't think of a hobby that you would torque things to all the time with quarter-inch drive. I'm sure there's something, I don't know if it would be like RC cars or something electronics, but that would be the opposite. You would want to divide up your quarter-inch drive and have the finite specs, and then if you're hardly ever going to use this, like you're only using it when you change your wheels or something along those lines, then skimp on the big size, right? But for me, 
the quarter inch is going to see minimalistic use, especially in comparison to half inch drive stuff. So uh, this is what I settled on. This is what I was, I'm hoping it's, you know, more like the uh, <laughs> uh, ratcheting wrenches we have from them and less like the breaker bar. The breaker bar has been okay, but I mean, every time I use it, I still, the handle complaint I made when we brought it in, it's just exasperated when I'm under the truck or in the engine bay. I'm like, God, oh, that handle needs to be bigger. So we'll see how this one stacks up. <laughs> Once again, uh, I think it's going to be a decent tool, plus minus 4%. Uh, Newton meter people, you metric folks, 3.7 to 27.4. It's adjustable in 1.5 pound increments. There's kind of an overview of it. Uh, again, they do say the calibration certificate is included. There's your DIN ISO number, part number from Capri. 31 100 quarter inch drive indicated there let's see here there's the goats some of the highlights let's see what they say special diamond design high impact resistant sure gear panel i'm very excited about that and that was honestly one of the selling points it's not going to be the mundane like cruddy knurled ones it's not going to be like the overdone plastic ones that are cheap it's going to be something different and whether we like it or hate it i don't know until we open it but i'm willing to find out uh, torque range 25 to 250 precision accuracy 1.5 uh, certified quick release button so that is present uh, certified to maintain the accuracy for 5,000 cycles CNC machine components for consistent accuracy. There's our quick release. That's kind of a neat feature. That's something you don't always see on a torque wrench. It has a positive locking ring. This was another thing. With this torque affix, I love how you change it. You pull that blue knob out at the bottom and you turn the handle. Uh, it's way nicer of a setup than some of the stuff I've had. Uh, this is kind of a similar type of a thing. It's the old school readout, but kind of like with the modern flare, it doesn't have like an adjustable knob at the bottom that locks and unlocks and gets stuck. Uh, right there, they claim that they're engraved, non-fading, and easy to read. We'll see. And again, diamond handle, high impact resistant ergonomic handle for a sure grip. So let's bust her open, see what we got to work with here. And again, this will be my first ever quarter inch drive torque wrench here at the house. So hopefully it doesn't suck. That's what, that's what I'm going for here. So a nice, decent case. It's pretty much ubiquitous with every other torque wrench I bought. Doesn't seem to be a sticker. I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, that, that's been a thing here lately. Uh, there is the brochure though, our diamond grip user's manual and warranty. And uh, we won't spend any time on that. How about it? We're just going to jump right into this because I want to get to the truck. Here's the case. I like when these uh, blow molded cases have a pad like that uh, because it allows me to come in and put my name and information a lot easier than having to etch into the rough surface. This, for what it's worth, where Capri's logo is, is also smooth. But uh, something like that is appreciated. It's also for people unlike me who just use, you know, like a little etch tool. If you print your own labels, it's good for that as well. <laughs> it's a, again, typical design, the clamshell that you come, it's very light, uh, come to expect in these tools. And it looks like this is a multi-purpose case. I say that, why? Well, check this out. I'm assuming this would probably be for a 3 8 I don't think you'd fit a half inch in there. I guess you could if it was a smaller profile. But I mean, for all I know, this could be quarter 3 8 and half inch. And maybe they have two different lengths on their 3 8 ones, or the handle style. With I bet the adjustment knob, actually, on some of those, uh, the cheaper drives, just like I have up in that case there, I'm betting that that's probably where your 3 8 would sit. So this probably would be the same case for quarter three-eighths or half inch some of you may sneeze at that but on capri's part that's pretty smart it saves them money and then in the event that your case breaks or you lose it you've got options right so this would be all oh there's the sticker i apologize i was gonna say if capri doesn't send a sticker i mean what's really going on here right here this is claiming 25 to 250 so since this is on the official paperwork it was also on the box again online it said 20 um but it is what it is, you know, we're missing the first five there, so hopefully it won't be a deal breaker. We won't spend much time with that. Uh, if you're interested in this stuff, though, it's always kind of cool to check it out. Looks like it's well within spec, though. That's pretty respectable. All right, so that's good. That's kind of reassuring. Right here, though, uh, we have got the money shot. You know, this isn't a bad little tool. This is a, a little better in hand than I thought it would be. So read me first. Well, that must be important, so I guess we will. 
this is critical and I'm glad they put this the fact that you see something like this on the tour trench at least makes you think <laughs> that they did a good job manufacturing the tool because they care enough about it that they don't want it to fail. Always set the torque to the lowest setting before and after each use. Which technically, you know, if you bottom it out, you're you're going to be there before, but you know, whatever. We'll give them we'll give them credit. At low torque setting, pull the wrench slowly before you can hear a click. Cool. We will uh, keep that in mind. And so uh, hopefully nothing was back here. It's all the same beautiful uh, Coming in right there. We just got a safety sticker. We'll try to get off because it's kind of raised and annoying uh, The body of this thing though not bad. I have to say I'm kind of impressed the handle I like it. you got to keep in mind. I'm the guy that complains I just max the card out there I had to clear some files But I'm the guy that always complains about handles being undersized screwdriver breaker bar torque wrench, whatever I'm more likely to complain about that than I am say that it's too big. All right, personal preference, ergonomic uh, preferral, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this does look cool when you spin it over. That's absolutely meaningless, but it is something neat to note when you spend money on a tool. Uh, it looks really neat, actually. You can do this for a long time. It's like a kaleidoscope for tool people. But in hand, it actually feels good. And look, it fits properly. I have zero issues, no complaints about that. Obviously, if this was three eighths or half, I think it would fill out fit my hand a little better but it's quarter inch this is a situation unlike the breaker bar with the breaker bar you want the handle to be big you're trying to break something free you're not concerned about the torque spec it was over torqued or it's rusted with this totally understand the form factor it needs to be in size we don't want massive we don't want extra length because then we're going to break heads off and we're going to have to go and get drill bits and taps and all kinds of stuff and weld nuts and waste a couple of hours of our life getting something seized out. Now right here, this is a, the bottom end, which is kind of fancy. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Uh, it's a red ring, which I wish it was blue. Not going to lie, that would tie in better with Capri and personal preference. <laughs> so, I don't know if that... Uh, I guess it kind of just feels like some sort of a washer. I'm sure we could probably find something and change that. Not going to, but it's not that big a deal. Right here, though, let's see what is going on on the business end. That's very hard to see because it has uh, got a bit of a luster to it. It's starting down here. Terrible. Okay. I was like, what have they done? I'm not understanding this. And then I flip it over, and that's what I wanted to see. Inch pounds. So can confirm 100% this thing is starting out at 25 this side we're scaling up a lot 25 55 85 115 145 175 205 235 so increments of 30 from 25 to 235 coming into this side we're going to start at the 40 mark we go up again in increments of 30 70 100 130 160 190 220 250 total scale 25 to 250 readouts separated by 30 on each side and 15 respectively why 15 because when we come in here if you look at the dial zero every 1.5 so you're going to essentially go three four five six seven and a half nine ten five twelve thirteen five what would this revolution be well thirteen five and one point five is fifteen that's why we would go from twenty five to forty important to note anytime like let's say that i ratchet this thing all the way up for those uh torque converter bolts or something and we're at 235 let's say i gotta back this back down so we maintain the accuracy of the tool don't destroy it this is very fluid uh that's simple to use it feels good in hand this I guess it's aluminum I'm glad it's not plastic but basically if we're at 25 and we want to go to 40 let's see how we make that happen that locks in place there so if I pull back and I start rotating and I'm kind of stuck in the middle I can lock back to the downside I can also twist and lock back to the upside it's going to positively retain to the closest 1.5 mark but let's come in and turn it all the way first 15 that should put us at the 40 foot inch pound mark i'm sorry <laughs> and uh, that it did for people going to use this as newton meters you're going to have to go with the you know inch pound scale here but i mean you would just subvert the back side if you will so now something i was kind of impressed with right here and i don't know that i should be or not 
but the head is pretty slim granted you'd kind of expect that keep in mind i've never had a quarter inch drive torque wrench because i don't deal with small stuff much but what i like about it with the body the selector switch is completely out of the way you're going to have pretty good clearance and then the quick release like i said that's typically not something that you see present with a tool like this uh, looks like a pretty good mechanism this almost reminds you more of a standard quarter inch drive ratchet uh, that said we would come in we would hit our selected torque and we would hear the click and we would back off so um we're going to get to use it on the truck. It'll put it through its paces. It could potentially come in really handy uh, on the late model stuff. Uh, I've had some friends talking to me recently. They're wanting to switch intakes on their 5.7s and 6.4s. So uh, who knows? We might get to check that out relatively soon. But again, let's say we were torquing to 40 inch pounds. Critical that you do this, whether it's immediately after the operation which i would advise or just before you wrap up for the night make sure that you back this back down all the way to the lowest setting which is going to be 25 inch pounds perfect so this to me was something i was willing to try it had the best range it was reasonably priced it's not a deal that i'm going to use frequently enough to say hey you know we should uh we should have shelled out for the $680 tour print from somewhere. Uh, there's like two things on the truck, and then I think there's quite a few things on the late model cars. Uh, the intake manifold particularly comes to mind again because it's plastic. But uh, for me personally, this is the money maker. This is what gets used all the time. This is where you would splurge. This literally has about like four applications in my life currently that I'm thinking of. I don't necessarily desire to spend the same money. Uh, I would, in a perfect world, love to have uh, the torque fix, you know, but like I said, I couldn't find inch pound stuff. And when I'm spending that kind of money, I want the scale to be present. But uh, I'm thinking they might make it. I'm thinking maybe they will in the future. We shall see. But this is what we brought in from Capri. You know why I got it. And uh, I'm kind of excited. Like I said, this handle here actually feels pretty good. And it does for what it's worth. It, has a decent ergonomic factor to it and it's pretty pretty good i mean it's not slipping too bad it is plastic but i mean it's uh, like this one is too but it's got a texture to it that's i don't have any any real complaints this far with it so uh, as long as we don't break bolts off <laughs> flex plates and torx converters we'll sh we should be okay uh, so coming in right here just i had this for comparison purpose uh, my Craftsman torque wrench, if you watch the one on this Ghidorah, you'll remember it was my first torque wrench. It died. It got stuck. Um, can't use it. So this was just something I brought in from Summit. No clue who makes it. It's been pretty good. Uh, but you can see what I'm saying here. It's got the ball detent, yes. But it is not quick release at all. It's got the chrome release. And then right here, that stupid little knob. Which, you this one's been good to me. Um, but that knob, I'm thinking, is probably why... You would increase the 3 8 and this style would tuck in here. At the top of the slot, I'm thinking the knob would push it there, and then I think their half inch would probably tuck in there. So uh, This one is kind of more of like a dedicated case. <laughs> so, I kinda, this is the handle comparison, though. You've got super fancy, super expensive, super awesome. You've got really reasonable, kind of old-school knurling, and then you've got the diamond handle. And i got to say, I mean, it's right on par with this one, so... Uh, the accuracy is important, uh, the functionality is important, we're going to figure that out uh, again hopefully pretty soon, kind of depends when everything gets squared away at the machine shop, but that said, that's what I brought in, that's all I got this time, just the uh, air pressure gauge and the torque wrench. Uh, I'm excited to try both of them out, I'm not going to lie, we'll see how we like that one, uh, but knowing now that you can get these for $23 that's a pretty good deal on the Joe's one so uh, if you have the Capri one how are you liking it how do you think it compares to something like this uh, similarly with the Ghidorah or Torque Fix it's probably the best torque wrench I will ever use but it's certainly the best one I own and have currently used uh, this one though I'm excited to try it in the quarter inch drive if any of you have the Capri Diamond Torque wrenches. How do you like them? Similarly, if any of you have Tecton or Tang, some of the uh, European viewers might have some of those Tang Torque wrenches. How do you like them? How do you feel they compare across the board? 
you know, to your cheap ones, to your kind of intermediate ones, and to your over-the-top super awesome ones. Uh, always interesting to know for future use. And uh, ultimate goal here, showcase what we got, let you know why we got it, see if it'll work for you, allow you to share your thoughts and opinions, particularly from first-hand feedback. But with that said, I don't think I have much more recording time. It's getting dark. I'm going to put the door down. I'm still airing out the ballast. I'm going to put the door down. Uh, keep the bugs from coming in and uh, get back in the engine bay start pulling an intake manifold so with that said as always thank you so much for watching i do hope you enjoyed timestamps links as always down below speaking of links lone star mopar car just maxed out again so i deleted something that hopefully i don't need but social media is where i was at uh, all three facebook instagram and twitter at lone star mopars hope everybody has a great weekend hopefully you enjoyed the video again any thoughts first-hand feedback feel free to leave it with that said I gotta get back to the engine bay, and I will catch you here in the next one.